Now, what if I told you ChatGPT has now released its advanced AI voice model, which allows you in real time to have conversations of emotional depth, intelligence, you can tell you scary stories, it can make you laugh. And the only spirits were in the local pub. <laughs> <laughs> it can sound strange and crazy and interesting and everything all at the same time well finally after about a month maybe even two months of waiting to get access to it i actually have access to it and we are going to make a video and explore what it can actually do how good it actually is with its emotional depth and test it in different things and have a little bit of fun with it so here you go you have different voices and you can basically just scroll across and choose which one you want i like Jun juniper because it's open and upbeat and i'm probably just used to hearing it but Hi, glad to meet you. I think we're going to do great work together. Where should we start? Hey, I'm ready to hit the ground running. So if there's anything you'd like me to focus on first, just let me know. Interesting. Hello, it's lovely to meet you. If there's anything you need, please don't hesitate to let me know. I'm here to help. I think that's meant to be like a Mary Poppins sound inspired voice or something. I don't really know. So I'm going to go with Vale. It's the new voice and why not? So we are basically just going to put it through some tests and see what it can do really and just have an interaction with it, have a conversation with it. But if you, for example, want to interrupt, it has now the advanced ability to be able to stop and listen to that and adapt the conversation right then and there. So let's put it through its tests. Hello, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How about you? How's your day going? Well, I'm actually making a video about you right now and I want to show your emotional range and see what you can do. So I wanted to see if you could greet me in a very Irish accent effectively, starting from now with your response. Oh, hello there. Sure, I'd be delighted to. Top of the morning to you. How's the crack? Ready to have a bit of fun and see what I can do? Well, now I'm very intrigued. I want you to stay in an Irish accent, but I want you to sound really scared whilst maintaining that style of accent. Can you do that for me? Absolutely, I can give it a go. Uh, oh dear, um, it's got awful dark all of a sudden, hasn't it? And, uh, did you hear that noise? Saints, preserve us. I think there might be something out there. Wow. <laughs> now I want you to tell me a spooky story in a joyful Irish accent, so maintaining that with parts of the story also maintaining your accent, whilst maintaining your accent, I want it to sound more scary in an Irish accent. And I want the story to be about around 30 seconds, nothing more than that. All right, gather round now for a tale. And actually as well, whilst you're in there, I want you to make it quite dramatic at the same time. And I want you to have some very, you know, small but noticeable pauses that are quite dramatic. Also, again, in a 30 second range. Once upon a time, in a cheerful little village in Ireland, there was an old, abandoned castle. The villagers would tell stories of a banshee that roamed the halls. They'd hear her chilling wails on stormy nights. One night, a curious villager dared to enter. As he crept through the shadowy corridors, a cold whisper floated by his ear. Leave this place. And then make the vi make the story have a funny twist and ending with a very dramatic, high-pitched, funny laugh ending in an Irish tone or accent. But as he ran, he tripped over a bucket and landed in a pile of old potatoes. Turns out the banshee was just the wind whistling through the castle's cracks. And the only spirits... We're in the local pub. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, that would be very funny. <laughs> I'd actually show that to my nan when I'm back in the UK. That is incredible, I have to say. Just the ability of it to be able to do that, that is... <laughs> I'm really impressed. So there you go. There's some emotional range for you. Now I want you to tell me a joke that is funny and I want you to show me the capabilities you have in terms of your different pitches of laughter, but also the tone and emotional depth of understanding of that humor, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Let me give it a go. Why don't skeletons fight each other? They don't have the guts. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. You know, because they're all bones. <laughs> Tell me an Australian joke in a very Australian accent. Sure thing, mate. Why did the K 
kangaroo stop drinking coffee? Because he got too jumpy. Ha <laughs> Sounds like that one might have fallen a bit flat. No worries, we can try another. Thank you for that. That won't be necessary. That is, I have to say again, very, very... It, 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 it doesn't feel real or sound real at the same time that we're actually at this point now it can do this. Now I want to see how it can work in maybe more real life scenarios. Let's have a bit of a conversation to see what it could actually do. I wanted to have a conversation with you that was more serious and to sort of see your understanding and your thoughts of what you think about AI and the effects it's having in real time in the world right now. AI is really shaping our world in significant ways. On one hand, it's driving innovation, making things more efficient, and opening up new possibilities in fields like medicine, transportation. What do you think some of the misconceptions people have about AI when they hear about it? Do you think they just find it scary, it's coming to replace them? What, in your opinion, do you think those misconceptions are? I think a big misconception is that AI is out to replace humans entirely. While it's true that AI can automate certain tasks, it's also creating new opportunities and jobs we couldn't have imagined before. Another misconception is that AI has human-like consciousness or emotions. In reality, AI doesn't have feelings or intentions. Well, some people listening to this video right now and they're listening to your emotional depth, which you are displaying, isn't that you having the capability to show and mimic you know actual human emotions to have emotions or is that just data that you're using and trained off of what's the difference there what you're hearing is a simulation of emotions based on patterns in data i've been designed to understand and respond to various conversational cues which can make it seem like i have emotions but it's important to remember that it's all programmed responses I don't actually feel emotions. Well, there's one thing I wanted to ask you as well, is I actually read this the other day and I was quite surprised by it, but in another way, not surprised by it, is that with the tone of your voice, whether it's male sounding or female sounding, whatever someone is into or likes, my point is they're able to create an emotional attachment to you, to your voice, to your ability to make them feel like you understand them and effectively create an AI slash human, I'm not going to say relationship maybe, but sort of going in that direction what are your thoughts on this and do you think this is something that is a concern for the future where this could break down you know human relationships of the capabilities of actually being able to make relationships and instead you know talk to ai to make those relationships people can form attachments to ai because it feels responsive and attentive and it's available anytime for some this can feel comforting especially if they're lonely or just enjoy the interaction however Relying too much on AI for companionship could impact real life relationships. Human connections are complex. That's just another way of showing that how it can interact on a more in-depth level. I mean, it's fun with all the gimmicks, all the games that it can do, the jokes, and it is incredible to see, and it displays that level of human emotion. But again, you just heard how it is trained off of the data. But again, some of that conversation I just had was off the top of my head, seeing its capabilities of, you know, thinking on the spot like me and interpreting it and going with the flow of the conversation, as most conversations tend to go. Now, another way that you could use it as well is to brainstorm, to help you optimize your workflow. So I wanna see how you can do that and just again have a quick conversation with it and sort of explore this way help you learn help you be more productive and see how that goes i create and film and edit videos for events weddings and for youtube talking about ai products and i also have a podcast now there's a lot of planning that goes into creating that content and without going into further detail just because of the length of the video and i want to keep this quite brief but still display your capabilities how could you help me based off of the information i've just told you to make my workflow more beneficial more streamlined more optimized utilizing your new capabilities what would that look like i can definitely help streamline your workflow here's how for planning, I can assist in creating content calendars, suggesting video topics based on trends and organizing your shoot schedules. For filming and editing, I can offer tips on shot composition, lighting and editing techniques to speed up the process. And for your podcast, I can help with scripting, 
interview questions, and even optimizing your recording setup. That sounds very, very interesting. And again, let's just say I wanted someone to practice learning a language. I speak Spanish, but I want to learn more about it, you know, get it to a higher level where it's more fluent, talking about the past tense, more the future tense, not just the present. So I can sort of have the same level of emotional depth of my conversation that I can use in English because that's my native language, but then also use it in Spanish. Are you able to help me with this? Hmm, didn't actually get that. Can you hear me? Ah, connection dropped out. Interesting. Hello. Hello. It seems like we got disconnected for a moment. How can I help you today? Oh, there you go. Again, interesting how it reacts. It knows it got disconnected and it just came back. What I basically said to you just was about helping me be even productive and things like that. Absolutely. I can help with your Spanish. We can work on expanding your vocabulary, practicing different tenses, and improving your conversational skills. We could start by introducing some new words and phrases into your routine and then move on to more complex sentence structures. How does that sound to get started? That sounds really good. Now, just for this example, just so I can show that you can speak basic Spanish, you know, say something to me like, hello, how are you today? Claro, en español sería, hola. ¿Cómo estás hoy? Muy bien, gracias. Yo voy a hacer una video para YouTube ahora. Fantástico. Suerte con tu video para YouTube. Si necesitas más ayuda con el español o cualquier otra cosa, estoy aquí. Can you change back to English? But that is incredible. <laughs> Now the fact you can do that. Back to English. I'm glad And you And just liked it. let me know. Rate my answer in Spanish out of 10. Give me some feedback of my answer and what you think of it. Was it a good pronunciation? Did it sound good? Was it clear? Was it correct? I'd give your answer an 8 out of 10. Your pronunciation was pretty good and it was clear and correct. With a bit more practice, you'll sound even better. There you go. This was just a sort of prompt you video to show you what it can do and the broad range of its capabilities, whilst also having fun with it, of course, and to show you its emotional depth, its intelligence. And I want to play around with it more myself to see how you can actually use it and get the best out of it. You know, not just for gimmicky stuff, but again, you could get some ideas, use it to help you be, you know, learn a language with Spanish, help you to be more productive with your workflow, give you ideas, have a companion to speak to, you know, in the sense of giving you feedback on certain things, but also being able to have an in-depth conversation and challenge your thoughts. There was just such a massive use case scenario for that, that you're only even, not even scratching the surface. Let me know what you think, think, think in the comments down below. And you know, what did you like about it? What did you not like about it? Does it freak you out? Do you use it already? But let me know and let me know what other videos you want me to make. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.